Hello everyone. My name is Vashala Pong Hong Jamasin. I am a PhD candidate at the Department of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology at UCLA. Today I would like to present my research entitled Studying Migratory Behavior in Parading Shrimp to Inform Conservation and Ecotourism Management. The shrimp in this photo is called parading shrimp, and the reason people call them parading shrimp is because they can perform the parading behavior, which is an upstream migratory behavior commonly can be found in many species of freshwater shrimp. However, this behavior is unique in which millions of the shrimp collectively climb out of the river and walk on land toward the headwater. This national phenomenon can be observed every year in Thailand during the rainy season, which fall between August to October. During the past 20 years, people have been excited to see the parading shrimp, and now the shrimp become part of the tourism industry there, as you can see that there is a statue of the parading shrimp there. Surprisingly, even though parading shrimp has been promoted as part of tourism for almost 20 years, we know very little about the biology of the shrimp. We do not know why they need to leave the water. We don't even know what is the species of the shrimp that walk at night. The shrimp not only be part of the tourism industry, they also be part of the local culture. As you see in these photos, this is a local folk dance that was developed from the walking pattern of the shrimp. Moreover, the shrimp also be a part of the local communities. Every year in September, local people gather there to celebrate the parading festival of the shrimp. Finally, the shrimp also be a part of the freshwater ecosystem. They serve as a prey species for several freshwater predators such as fishes. Recently, a lot of tourists traveled there to watch the shrimp, and I found that the number of the parading shrimp decreased when there are tourists there. Unfortunately, we cannot do anything much at the time because we do not have any fundamental information or knowledge about the shrimp, which caused the lacking of the management plan. So this research, I studied basic behavior of the shrimp and how shrimp responded to tourists. The research has three aims. The first aim is to study proximate causation of the parading behavior, which is what triggers the shrimp to parade. Second, I study uh, what is the function of the parading behavior or the ultimate causation. Finally, I studied the effect of the, uh, anthropogenic light on the parading shrimp. The research site located in the northeastern part of Thailand, as you can see in the yellow box. When I zoom in, this is how it looks like here in the headwater and here in the rapid site where we found the parading shrimp. So we hypothesized that the parading shrimp might swim or walk from the rapid to the headwater. And this is uh, when I was there, this is a photo I took. Since we do not know the species of the shrimp at first, I then identified the species of the shrimp using the DNA barcoding, and I found that the species of the shrimp is Macrobankium dnbnfluens. So for the first study, what triggered the shrimp to walk on land, right? To investigate this, I set up camera trap to take photos of the shrimp every five minutes from 6 p.m. to 8 a.m. of the next day. And here is how the photo looked like. I didn't count the number of the shrimp from this photo. So per day, I have almost 180 photos to count the number of the shrimp. And at the same time, I also measure several environmental parameters such as water velocity, moonlight, cloud coverage, uh, humidities, and temperature. And here is the result. In case some of you haven't, haven't seen the parading shrimp before, this is how it looks like. At night, the Group, big group of the shrimp will climb out of the river and collectively walk upstream toward the headwater. So the, the question is, what caused them to climb out and walk to the headwater like this, right? So to do this, I um, have the number of the shrimp per night that I count from the uh, camera trap as a dependence variables. And I also have several independence variables, which are environmental factors, and I fit the data with negative binomial linear regression. So what I found is that the shrimp will walk more when the air temperature is low and the water velocity is high and <clears throat> at the non-tourist site more than the tourist site. However, this model only explains about 38.5% of the number of the shrimp that parade each night. So next, where else can we find the shrimp? Can we be able to find the shrimp along the river that we observe the parading shrimp? So I surveyed several places along the river and I only found two places where the shrimp decided to parade out at night. And these two sites are, the first one on the left is a tourist site and on the right is a non-tourist site, which is a weird structure. 
I then investigate the similarities of the river topology between two sites, and I found that the river must consist of both zones to meet the criteria that they should be poured out of the river. And here's how it looks like. The first zone is the low flow zone here, and the second zone is the low flow zone with high turbulence. The third zone is the fast flow zone, and the fourth is the upstream zone. Here is what happened when the sun starts to set and the sky turned dark, but not completely dark yet. The shrimp start to active by walking uh, underwater, and then they gather at the um, turbulent zone. Then when the sky turned completely dark, the shrimp will start to climb out of the river and walk past to the fast flow zone and return back to the river again at the upstream zone. This infer that turbulence and light affect the parading behavior of the shrimp. From the first study here, we can conclude that air temperatures, light, water velocity, and turbulence might be a factor that trigger the parading behavior of the shrimp. Then I would like to know the functions of the parading behavior, which is my second uh, goal. Local law believe that the shrimp migrate upstream to breathe at in salmon. To test this belief, I um, study the population demography of the parading shrimp that parade at night. I caught almost like 700 shrimp and measured the carapace length, which can be used as a proxy for investigate the sexual maturity. So I found that most of the parading shrimp is juveniles, while 8% uh, are adult. This indicates that the shrimp do not parade to breed, right? If, because if they parade for breeding, then we should see like more adult compared to the juveniles. So then why they need to parade, right? So I hypothesize that the trim might parade to escape the strong current of the river. So to test the hypothesis, I invent an artificial uh, stream that I can adjust the water velocity using the valve here. Uh, and then I, what I did is I have the pipe here and then I put the shrimp at the center of the pipe. Then I turn on the water and then I start to increase the water velocity until the shrimp couldn't tolerate that water velocity. Here is what happened. So when the shrimp fill, uh, flow down to the uh, lower tank, I record the maximum water velocity that the shrimp can tolerate and the body size of the shrimp. I then plot the relationship between the maximum water velocity that the shrimp can tolerate and their body size. And here's how it looks like. So um, rem remember that at the natural habitat, the shrimp will walk out of the river when water velocity is about 110 to 120 centimeters per second. So I will make a dash line here. And this means that the shrimp that has a calibrate length uh, below this dash line uh, will be washed away under the water velocity at 120. Uh, and the shrimp that have this size of the calibrate length will be able to you know, swim underwater, right? So uh, if we compare this data with the histogram that I showed you previously, we will see that most of the shrimp that perform the protein behavior have color pairs length ranging from four to seven, which exactly what we found here in the left graph here, right? So this indicates that the protein behavior helped the juveniles or small shrimp to escape the strong current. So then do you think when the shrimp walk on land, do they save or not? Okay, I will give you two seconds to think about this. And the answer is no, because as you can see in this video, I saw that there is some spider waiting to eat them, and this is called the fishing spider. I also found many predators that eat the shrimp too, show in these pictures. And you know, this indicates that the shrimp, when they walk on land, they also serve as a food source for many terrestrial predators. To conclude this study, we now know that uh, the water velocity causes the shrimp to parade, and the shrimp do not parade for reproduction, as people believe, because we found most of them are juvenile. Instead, they parade to escape the strong current, right? Moreover, we also found that they, when they parade, they also serve as a food source for many land predators. So if you are interested to read more or learn more about this, you can download this paper from the Journal of Zoology that I published last year. Then my last study is about the effect of anthropogenic life on the parading shrimp. As you see in this picture, tourists went there and watched the shrimp without any management plan and used their own flashlight. So I did my preliminary study and I found that light intensity at 50 lux disturbed the shrimp the least compared to higher than that. 
I then would like to know that which light color affect the shrimp the least. Since we all know that the shrimp perceive the light color different from human, right? To do this, I set up the light sort here, which I covered with cellophane paper with different color too. And I have a night video camera here. I will then film the shrimp that walk past to this zone to and then study their behavior under the video uh, that I filmed. So this is how the experiment look like. I have several light color and I measure walking speed and um, on the number of the shrimp that walk back to the river. The results show that the red and yellow light affect the shrimp the least. So from this um, result, we can conclude that tourists uh, should use the light at about 50 lux to watch the shrimp. And it might be good if they use red or yellow light to watch the shrimp too. And this can help to mitigate the anthropogenic disturbance on the protein shrimp. Now that we know about the behavior of the shrimp and we know how um, human disturb the shrimp, I then decide a management plan for the ecotourist site based on the result that I just present to you. And here is my plan. As we know from the first study that the shrimp will start to walk out of the river at the low flow zone and walk past to the fast flow zone and return back to the river at the upstream zone. I suggest that there are, we should be divide this location into three zones. The first zone is the zone that we shouldn't allow tourists to go there because if tourists go there, turn on the light, the shrimp might not pray at that night. Then the second zone is the zone where tourists can watch the shrimp with the red light at about 50 lux to prevent the shrimp from walking back to the river. Finally, the third zone, we allow the tourists to watch the shrimp with the white light color, or they can do the flash photography if they would like to, because even though the shrimp walk uh, back to the river, they will not be watched downstream. So this is my scientific animal behavior based recommendation for the ecotourism site. And you can read more about this in uh, from the current zoology. I published that this year already too. So I also study how humans value the shrimp and think about the management plan that I show you here, but I have no time to present that in this talk. So if you are interested in, you can access it from the Journal Frontier in Conservation Side, which is I wrote about how people think about the shrimp and how we can manage or decide a uh, management plan for the ecotourism site. So to sum up my research, I study behavior and biology of the shrimp. And I also study how humans think about the shrimp. Then I design uh, a management plan to mitigate the anthropogenic disturbance on the shrimp. So I hope that this can not only save the shrimp population from local extinction, but it's also save the local culture, local business there, and also save the ecosystem there too. So from the talk that I just gave, this research couldn't be done without help, suggestion, and advice from my advisor, Professor Daniel Blumstein from UCLA, and three of my committees, Professor Greg Graters, Peter Nonax, and Peter Narins at UCLA. I also would like to thank Professor Lemon Bauer from the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. This research was supported by the Ecology and Evolutionary Biology Department at UCLA and the Sigma Psi Grant in Aid. Thank you very much for your attention, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me at any time or reach out to me at windbiologist at ucla.edu. So thank you very much.